Hi, I'm Paul Perdue, and I'm the infrastructure nerd. And I'm Mary Jo Boyd, a legal technologist. You know, a lot of times we just want to print a quick list of our outstanding items before reconciliation, or after, or even during in the middle of the month. Mm -hmm. And we usually start a reconciliation, and then we print it off and just print that last little section of outstanding checks. It sounds like there should probably be some way to do that without having to start a reconciliation that you're not going to finish. There is, and it's the journal report. Wow. Will you show us how that works? I will. Okay, so a lot of times we want to just get a quick list of our outstanding items, and we don't want to have to, you know, open up a reconciliation and then print it and then just print the outstanding report. So that's the way that a lot of us have been trained to do this in the past, and it's the only way that we've really known how do we get an outstanding checklist or an outstanding items list of what we have for our general ledger. So I'm going to show you a different way that you can do that. Uh, and we're gonna use the journal report for this. So I'm in sample data, so I have all kinds of stuff in here, so we're gonna see what happens. But when we go to our reports tab up here, we're then going to click on the journal report. And we have a lot of different parameters that we can set in here to get some specific information that we want. So in our instance, we're gonna to wanna to get just the outstanding items. So first off, we have to select the accounts that we want to do. We don't want a journal report that has everything out there that's ever been, you know, outstanding for all different accounts and all that. We just want to focus on our bank accounts. And generally, you're probably going to just pick your main operating account. Because I'm in sample data, I want to get some extra information because I'm not sure how many items are actually in the account, uh, in the operating account. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick all of my bank accounts just to get some results here I know that I'm going to get. Um, so in here, you would probably more than likely pick your operating account, or maybe you just want to see the outstanding items for your money market or whatever your accounts are in here. Anything that's a bank account, that's what we're worrying about in this, uh, for this demonstration. So I'm just going to say, okay, so I've selected my bank accounts. That's the first thing. Next, we want to select our date range. So I don't want to restrict my date range on outstanding items because I could have outstanding items that are, you know, several months old or, you know, even sometimes several years old. So I want to see anything that's outstanding. So I'm going to change the date from uh, the current month to show all. I want all of the dates here. And then my date selection will just be the date. That's all I'm caring about right now. I want all of that. Now, on the Options tab, this is where we start to find uh, those restricted, I just want my outstanding items. And to do that, what we're going to do is worry about the record status. We're going to change that. So when we click on Specific, it lets us decide what do we want to see. And I'm going to just say, show me the outstanding, then OK. Now, you also, if you're worried about just getting checks that maybe have been written from the Accounts Payable program and posted from Accounts Payable, you could also restrict your source. Now, because I'm in sample data, I really don't know exactly what is out there. Um, so I'm not going to select a specific source on this. But you could. You could select just Accounts Payable, and this would give you just the checks that are outstanding versus just the, um, you know, the deposits and everything else that is out there. So for me, I'm going to just leave it open. But just know that that is an option that on the record source, you can say just accounts payable. So I have my source selected. I have the record status selected as outstanding. And then on my format, this is optional of whatever you want to include on your report. So this is the defaults. Uh, it's going to tell me where that came from for my source. It will have the, um, the dates, the check number will be important, uh, departments if you're using them, journal numbers, amounts, and descriptions. All of these things, you can pick and choose what you want to do. If you want to know what user did it, you can click the user ID. The date it was entered, all of those things, uh, you're able to just pick and choose for yourself. On the sort tab, the first order sort is date. And I do want to have that. I want to find out how old everything is. And we can even subtotal by date if you want, or you can take that off. And then the second sort by default is the reference and then the account number. You can again change these to different things as you see fit. So I have date as my first sort. I might want um, entry order. I might want the user ID. There's all kinds of different things in here that you can pick and choose. So I'm going to leave that here for now. Once you've made all those selections on your format and your sort tab, uh, for your specific ones, and then all the things that we talked about for which account, your date range, and then your options as to just showing just the outstanding. We'll say OK, and I'm going to preview it. 
Now I've got this list of all of my outstanding items. So for this, again, I'm in sample data, so I have lots of different bank accounts I'm doing just so I can get you some results on here. And a lot of these are manual entries and things, but you would see in here, there's a couple, here's one with a check number right here. So here's one that was put in on 1031 of 16, and there's my check number, and there was the amount of what that was. Uh, so that's where you can come in and you can start getting that list and then the total amount of what those outstanding items are very quickly in a nice neat format and print that off and you've got it. You don't have to worry about starting a reconciliation. You don't have to worry about trying to go out and then print that just for that last page of outstanding items or pages, depending on how many you have. This journal report will get that for you. Now, if you like this format, once you've got it uh, selected, we don't have to come in every single time and select these same parameters. We can save that over here and give it a name. So if this is, this is spitting out exactly what I want for the information, I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna give it a little short name. So I'm just gonna call it Outstand. Um, I think I can do Outstand, there we go. And then this will just be my outstanding items report. Okay, I am not gonna make this the default. I'm just going to let that be my, my version here. Um, so we're just gonna name it and we can display that report in the, uh, this description in the header if we want and say okay. Now I've got a version of this report so quickly every month or every week or whenever I want to get that report, all I have to do is come into my journal report, hit load, and choose that outstanding items report. It will already have all of my parameters filled in. You can see it just changed my date. It has all of my selected accounts that I had uh, and it has all of the items that I had that I had chosen on each of these, just the outstanding, all of my selections here, and my sorts. And I can just run it each time. So it'll make it really quick and easy for you come reconciliation time uh, to get that list if you need it. And there you go. So there you have it, an easy way to get the outstanding items list very quickly. And that's just one more way that we can help you to worry less. And practice more.